Insights for IT Transforming into the Cloud. Cloud sounds like a good topic for the show. Paul? Thank you. Can everybody hear me? All right, so is anybody excited to hear about Cisco Cloud? Of course not. This is my job, <laughs> to get you excited. <laughs> so let me start with uh, something obvious. People like cloud. And this is mainly because it's easy to use. It's always available. It's avail available immediately. You don't have to wait. You don't have to call IT people. The capacity is virtually unlimited. And it's self-service, right? But this is not a joke. It makes sense for a business as well, because it saves money, uh, it helps businesses to be agile, to answer the competitive moves immediately, almost immediately. Uh, there's no upfront investment. A lot of ways in which cloud technologies, cloud solutions make sense for the business, for the business leaders. So it's, in a way, no surprise that and by the way, for people that uh, need my slides, I can share my slides with, with you. I'm going to be here. Um, I'm planning for some, at least a couple of minutes of questions, but if uh, that will not be possible, I only have half an hour, I'll be um, right here in the hall. So there's no uh, wonder why the services deployed in a cloud environment are more and more. And there is a pressure on the way we do IT traditionally, like virtualized data centers, applications running on big, fat virtual machines, uh, everything is stable, uh, ITIL, stuff like this. So I personally see that this trend of uh, more and more cloud um, to be curved, the growth to be curved in the next couple of years, still growing, but not that fast. And the point is, there is sense, there is uh, benefits in running uh, both cloud IT as well as traditional non-cloud IT. And if you look at this dilemma that we have today, whether we should uh, basically build our services using technologies or rather buy, what I can tell you is, there's different agendas. So an IT organization obviously will be happy to push out complexity to the cloud providers or um, in, in a public cloud scenario or maybe to a provider of private cloud solutions. There are some now. But at the same time, if you look at the public cloud providers, they basically want to lock the customer in most of them. So you start uh, doing your TCO exercise. It makes sense. It's cheaper. It's faster. You don't cope with the complexity, but with the time, you get surprised by the bill and by the uh, level of guarantees, the SLAs, and by the level of the visibility you have in the public cloud. So I'm not saying the public cloud is bad, but it's definitely not good for every workload. So there is this dilemma on what to buy, what to uh, basically build. And when you build, where we, are you supposed to deploy your, your workloads? Is it in the traditional IT environment, non-cloud? Is it on a private cloud? Um, is it based on OpenStack or traditional proprietary solutions uh, for private cloud? Is it a public cloud? Yeah. It makes a lot of sense to uh, basically take an educated decision on uh, workload placement. And you've heard this about, you've heard about uh, services broker from the consultants, from uh, uh, the thought leaders in the industry. And we think at Cisco that it should rather be a combination of 
uh, IT services builder in which an IT organization gets the IT technologies from vendors and build their own services as well as some outsourcing of the services like software as a service or it may be uh, uh, managed services. So a combination of both buy as well as build that would turn the IT into both a builder and a services broker. And if, if you look at the cloud, so I'm moving away from the traditional non-cloud way of doing IT. So that virtualized data center. If you look at the cloud technologies, I'm, I'm looking at private cloud as well as public cloud. There's a lot of options here, a lot of technology, a lot of options out there in the market. And obviously, there are clear benefits, right, in terms of easy, being easy to use. Uh, actually, cloud increases the uh, efficiency of uh, e using the cloud infrastructure, the data center infrastructure. Um, there are a lot of benefits, both on the technical side as well as on the business side. But at the same time, cloud comes with uh, challenges. And let me briefly go through the challenges. So first of all is the complexity. You see a lot of offers, right? Which one is uh, uh, the best fit for your workload? It's not easy to uh, deploy a workload today on a cloud uh, solution. Second is uh, the big question, is your application ready to be deployed on cloud? There is a, a lot of discussion about uh, pets versus cattle. Uh, applications being cloud aware uh, versus uh, cloud unaware or cloud applications that are called cloudy. I don't really like the, this term. Um, and um, it's actually simple. So it comes down to two concepts. One is uh, availability and the other one is scalability. So in a traditional environment, in a non-cloud environment, applications do uh, cope with uh, failure, so plan for availability in a fundamental different way than the cloud applications, cloud aware applications. And it's pretty much the way, the same way uh, in terms of scalability. Um, so it's not that complex. In a traditional environment, in a non-cloud environment, an application basically relies heavily on the infrastructure for failure. Uh, so they run on big, fat virtual machines uh, on top of uh, robust hardware infrastructure. Where if you look at the cloud uh, model, applications actually uh, spread on many virtual machines, and they have this intelligence of uh, detecting failure, but also detecting demand. So then if, for example, they detect failure on one of those virtual machines, they are able to call the platform and spin up a new virtual machine and cope with that failure. So for cloud applications, failure is an option. They, they enjoy failure, but they contain failure. So they fail small, and failure is fine for uh, those cloud applications. Same thing in terms of scalability. The, application is, the cloud application is able to detect the additional demand placed on top of it, and then it calls infrastructure, spins up additional v virtual machines uh, and run on top of uh, those virtual machines to cope with, the, to address that demand. Same thing when it comes to deprovisioning the virtual machines, right? So it's actually simple. That's uh, the traditional application versus cloud. And some people say, okay, cloud applications are smarter. I don't think that is true. So. Uh, it's, they, they are just different models, right? So if you have to do, for example, management for your workloads running in the public cloud, as well as your workloads running in your data center, being it a virtualized data center or uh, maybe a private cloud deployment, that's challenging. That's complexity because the public cloud architectures are different. The architecture for networking is different. You are given an, another IP address that is fundamentally different from your private IP address space. The way they do security in the public cloud is different. And in fact, we don't even understand what's happening behind the scene in the way the security is implemented in the public cloud. So how can we basically 
move one application or components of my application, because an application, remember, can spread on many virtual machines today. How can I move some applications in the public cloud and at the same time uh, being able to do this without professional services and without uh, a lot of uh, uh, reconfigurations of IP addressing, security, uh, I, I don't, I, I want to be able to define one time the application security policy and then move either components of my applications into different public cloud offers. Be able to instantiate automatically that application security policy without having to call professional services or having to uh, allocate a lot of operations people to do that. So that's basically the complexity challenge. Um, in terms of security, you know, in, in the public cloud, you fundamentally share the infrastructure with uh, other customers, right, with other neighbors. And maybe you've heard about the noisy neighbor problem. Uh, I personally know people that hack hypervisors, and, and this is because I'm coming from Europe, right, and they are more crazy on hacking. Um, People then hack hypervisors of the top, the leader in infrastructure as a service. Uh, so it, it can happen. I'm not saying the public cloud guys do a bad job in terms of security, but it's just that we, we cannot control that because we don't know how they do it. So we, we have to basically rely on that, but at the same time sign a terms and conditions that have no guarantees. And there's also the visibility uh, challenge. You, you can't actually get a lot of information out of the workloads that run on uh, top of uh, public cloud. Think, for example, from a networking perspective, uh, the challenge to get, the, for example, NetFlow data uh, for that traffic that flows in and out your applications, right? So it's challenging today. And the, there is also the problem of uh, being locked in that cloud API and that's a dreadful uh, uh, problem. I, I was talking a few months ago at the beginning of uh, this spring with the CTO of uh, one of the leaders in uh, software services, a software vendor, an ISV, and um, they started with uh, a, uh, public cloud, a leading public cloud provider, and then they grew, they became big, and then they decided to move back on premises. And, I, uh, and we had discussion uh, with them about private cloud. And I asked that uh, chief technical officer, what is the reason uh, you guys decided to move back? Because that's going to be complex. You will need a lot of professional services to do that. It's your core business that you run out there. And to my surprise, he said, it's everything. So it's security, it's cost, it's uh, complexity is lack of uh, information, lack of visibility, and definitely the lock-in. So basically in, uh, in uh, a few sentences, he went through all those challenges and they were hit hard. So coming back to Cisco, if you look at our strategy, what we want to do is actually address these challenges and make that simple for you. Because the the cloud business is becoming more and more popular, right? The cloud services, uh, you will see a rise in private cloud. There is a public cloud already. So we want to help you to deploy your applications in any location with no complexity. So being able to do security at the same way you do uh, uh, in your own uh, environment, in your own premises, Move applications or components of the applications around in any public cloud provider you want. And we instantiate automatically that uh, policy for you. We encrypt the traffic for you. So everything being automated, no complexity, with full security, with enterprise-grade security, regardless of whether you run your um, workloads on-prem or off-prem. Um, also, with full visibility, we plan to give you the maximum visibility on those workloads. And the way we do that, we basically build virtual infrastructure, 
uh, on top of public cloud providers. And we provide a standard set of services uh, for you so that you can move applications wherever you want. With no lock-in, because the move of an application uh, becomes just a set of mouse clicks. So the high-level uh, description of our strategy is any application anywhere, right? Don't worry about whether your application is a, 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 a Microsoft virtualization application or it's a, a VMware uh, virtualization application or whatever, Linux virtualization. Just don't care about this. Move it with a mouse click uh, on any public cloud platform. This is our strategy. And how we do this, um, maybe you've heard about Cisco InterCloud. And this is basically our main effort towards helping you with this complexity, security, uh, avoidance of uh, locking and visibility. So what is Cisco InterCloud? It's actually simple. So I've seen a lot of complex definitions, but it's not that complex. It's actually so simple. It's a globally, network, globally connected network of clouds. That's it, nothing else. So we work with our partners, which are service providers, some systems integrators that turn out to be, uh, to be interested in providing public cloud. Um, and then we connect all those cloud offers in a big network. And by network, I mean you can move your workloads in, uh, in this network of clouds without professional services. And you can secure your workloads when deployed in the network. Part of this network is also uh, the big set of, uh, actually the small set of big uh, public cloud providers, the public cloud giants, like for example, Amazon or uh, Azure. So they are plugged in our network as well. So partners is the first component and that's actually, our strategy is the most partner-centric cloud strategy in the world. We rely on partners. We don't want to, you know, be the big cloud providers and lock you in our offer, but rather because it's in our DNA. I mean, we, we come from a networking perspective, from a networking background, and that's what we plan, to connect those clouds, to help you move applications around. Just the way we helped you move uh, uh, packets, IP packets, we now help you to move your applications around. So the second component is the, the actual set of technologies that uh, help you build private clouds as well as the, those providers to build the public cloud uh, offers. And obviously the third component is the multitude of services of those providers that we present you in a nice way. Um, and that's a component we call Cisco InterCloud Marketplace. That's actually new and it's uh, being announced as we speak now in uh, Cisco Live uh, in San Diego. So that's it, simple, globally connected network of clouds built with the help of partners. We incorporate the public cloud giants and with that we want to solve those problems. The complexity of uh, running your workloads both on-prem and off-prem um, deploying your workloads in the public cloud with the same security you have in the private cloud and avoid the lock-in. Being able to move in this globally connected network of clouds without professional services, without manual intervention. I'm going to skip this because I talked about the, the value you, you get. That's actually a, a, a summary slide, that I, but I just did this uh, summary, so let's skip this as well. Now, let's deep dive a bit uh, on the technologies component. So partners, technologies, and services, right? Let's have a look on the cloud technologies, cloud solutions from Cisco. We believe that the very first step is actually understanding what's happening. And we, we basically had the same issue. When we 
started to think about whether it makes sense to build a private cloud or not way long ago. We had an issue. Is anybody using public cloud now? Does it make sense to build a private cloud? And we talked to our IT and we discovered that there, is a, there was a big gap between what IT thought the actual consumption of cloud is as opposed to the, the actual reality. And actually the, the, the gap was like almost four times. Now, with our customers today, we engage and help them with this cloud uh, consumption. We call it cloud consumption assessment that gives them visibility. And <laughs> the gap we, we see with these customers uh, is actually between 9 and almost 20%. So almost 20% more actual cloud consumption, cloud usage in reality, um, as opposed to what IT believes that consumption is. So that's amazing, right? Obviously, it differs from industry to industry. So we believe that the first step would be to understand what's happening. And then, if it makes sense, we can help you build a private cloud, starting with the infrastructure, so servers, network switches, uh, and storage uh, systems. Um, our SDN offer uh, is called application-centric infrastructure, and that's a tight SDN control with the actual hardware in, in our switches. And on, on top of this, we have private cloud solutions for the, the what is currently called classic IT environment. Maybe you've heard about uh, bimodal IT. This is actually a term coined by Garner. Um, I think it was one year ago. And by bimodal IT, they mean classic IT in which you uh, basically run in Microsoft or VMware environments. And by Agile IT, they mean either public cloud, like Azure AWS, or a private cloud based on OpenStack. So again, this is not like one IT model, one IT environment is better than the other. They are both good, but they are fundamentally different. Classic IT follows the Hyper-V and uh, vSphere uh, domains, and the Agile IT is uh, either OpenStack on-premises or public cloud services. And they call it Agile. Let me actually build this slide. And they call it Agile because you can actually deploy applications very fast. You don't have to call IT people. Hey, I need a new virtual machine. I need a storage volume. I need a, a, a new VLAN and a new IP address. That's, uh, that's fully automated. And some people ask, ask me, hey, I don't have that much software development, so why are we now moving the discussion from my data center into the software development and the, the number of application deployments in my uh, infrastructure? And typically, People don't realize, but there is more and more software. Software is today modeling or enhancing business processes. And if you look at the way, for example, Cisco interacts with customers, with uh, its own employees, with business partners, it's all software. It's all web applications. Um, also, uh, there is a lot of effort in uh, uh, the development of mobile applications. All those applications implement uh, features, and those features are a dynamic environment. They are being added and removed almost on a daily basis. Now, for each feature that you add or remove, you have to uh, recode your application and then deploy it several times for a test until finally you can deploy it in production. And that, if you multiply this with the number of applications that run in a uh, in an enterprise, you end up easily with hundreds, if not thousands, of deployments per day. 
Now, if those deployments, application deployments, have to quickly react to a competitive move or a business need, then you, you just, you simply cannot afford to have manual processes in between. And this is why they call these uh, uh, domains based on Azure, AWS, or other public cloud providers, or OpenStack, private cloud, they call it agile. Because with that, they have true APIs that developers love, and they can quickly deploy, they can automate the deployment of uh, applications. So without getting in details, on top of it, uh, there's a services catalog and workflow functionality. That's where you can, for example, automatically discover the components of services that are available, that are made available by the underlying platforms, cloud, SDN, as well as hardware, and then be able to design new application stacks based on those uh, components of applications. Um, obviously, there is a user portal component, which is quite important, and people tend to neglect it. But as a service is being easy to access and provision and use, it actually uh, gets more popular, and it increases the relevance of IT. So classic IT and agile IT, we talked about this. Now, of course, you will continue to use public cloud, right? because it makes sense. If you have a, a workload that is super elastic in terms of capacity, and you don't expect that to run for like the whole year, it makes a lot of sense to not invest in private cloud and then uh, deploy it on the public cloud. How, how do you connect the private environment, being it classic or agile, with the public cloud? How do you solve those problems of um, Workload mobility, security of the applications in the public cloud. Uh, how do you avoid the lock-in? We provide this software product called InterCloud Fabric. We deploy that in your data center on a few virtual machines, and that will talk with your virtualization manager and will provide you the hybrid cloud component. So being able to move applications from your data center into the public cloud and back, or between two public cloud providers. If, for example, a new provider will make a better offer for you as an enterprise, you can simply move those workloads from one provider into another with no professional services. And then it's uh, security, obviously. You want to be able to run those applications just like they run in your private environment. So. What we do is we extend your private IP addressing, so then when you click and move an application or a component of a, an application into the public cloud, it stays in the same IP addressing, in the same uh, IP addressing space, in the same VLAN, so you can continue to use the intranet services like DNS, uh, Active Directory, uh, your management tools, your chef, uh, Puppet, whatever you use, uh, there's no change in IP address, so you can just continue to uh, uh, use that component of the application. Also, once you define the application security policy, like for example, your database cannot be accessed by your web servers, and you move some web servers in the public cloud, we instantiate that policy for you and you don't have to reconfigure anything, regardless of where you run those web servers, right? they stay into the same policy, and we instantiate that policy for you regardless of um, where you move in the intercloud. So whether it's the, you know, the set of public cloud giants or our intercloud partners. So that is, you know, in a nutshell, the technologies behind inter Cisco intercloud, both on the private side as well as uh, on the hybrid cloud side. Now, we have five more minutes. Quickly, in terms of visibility, this is the actual gap based on different industries we are seeing between the actual cloud usage in reality and the, actual, and the expectation of uh, IT. So IT believes the actual uh, uh, usage of Cloud, and by cloud I mean software as a service, platform as a service, as well as infrastructure as a service. 
those little white boxes as opposed to those big uh, uh, blue boxes. This is the gap. That's uh, the gap between reality and expectations. Now, once you get that visibility and you understand who's using what cloud services, you can do great things like, for example, uh, cut the TCO. So, see some savings. We, we sell, for example, one software as a service called WebEx. That's a collaboration tool sold as a service um, for enterprises. And a lot of times, enterprises uh, realize that after this analysis, they realize they have several different contracts for WebEx. And obviously, if they consolidate, like, it can uh, apply to WebEx, uh, Dropbox, whatever. If you consolidate, then you save money. And there are other uh, categories of savings that you can do once you understand what is that actual consumption. Then is the, the actual business risk associated with pushing data in the public cloud. Uh, for example, without uh, a data loss uh, protection mechanism. I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm actually gonna skip this. So let's move to, so that was the first step, visibility. Second step is private cloud, right? For a classic IT, we have a bundle of software uh, products that go from the SDN management, uh, server management, up to the prime services catalog uh, uh, component. Obviously, intercloud fabric, the actual hybrid cloud component is in this band, bundle. And this is for the classic IT component, not the agile, right? For the agile, we have a service called Cisco OpenStack Private Cloud, Cisco OPC. And this is a fully managed private cloud offer. And by fully managed, I mean this is like public cloud. It's just that it resides on your servers in your data center. In terms of price, our finding is that for customers that spend about $50,000 per month with public cloud, for those customers, this gets actually between 30% and even up to 70% cheaper than the public cloud. So it makes a lot of sense. Private cloud evolved. Private cloud is mature now. OpenStack is the biggest development, software development community in the world. And it, it becomes more and more mature. And we provide that as a many service for you, uh, again, in, on your premises with uh, free nines and a half availability. So we commit on uh, availability in, with an SLA. It runs on pretty much any x86 platform, and we provide uh, storage services uh, in it, both commodity storage based on internal disk drives in uh, servers, as well as we connect to your enterprise storage systems like EMC, NetApp, uh, whatever you have. So think about, think about private cloud and the way you can keep your workloads on your premises and save money with that. Now, last slide, and I have one more minute. I'm gonna be available for uh, questions here in the hall. Last slide is the hybrid cloud component. I talked about InterCloud, but the actual product behind that is a software product called InterCloud Fabric. Um, and with that, we avoid the lock-in. We talk to any hypervisor manager you have, and we provide you the workload mobility from your data center into the public cloud as well as between public cloud providers. It's software only, so it has no dependency on hardware, and it builds an end-to-end -end security for your workloads. And by that I mean, if you, for example, move one component of the application, like a web server or an app server, in the public cloud, then the traffic gets encrypted down to the VM. So it's not like I encrypt my traffic uh, up to a public cloud provider uh, VPN gateway, and then I just rely on the public cloud with the traffic that flows in that network. I 
With this, we encrypt the traffic end-to-end. -end. So from the virtual machine uh, to any other virtual machine in the intranet, as well as other virtual machines that you manage, that you own in the public cloud. So it's full encryption, right? Second is we authenticate. So based on certificates, we authenticate every virtual machine running in the public cloud. I'm not going to go in details, but bottom line, we provide the, these technologies for hybrid cloud, private cloud, public cloud. We've built this network of, and I'm sorry, we're still building it. So we reached now 450 data centers across the globe, and we're growing. Uh, almost 70 uh, intercloud providers plugged into this network, and we're growing. So. What we want to solve here is, again, help you to avoid the lock-in, be able to deploy any application on any of these clouds. Thank you.